If you're watching this video, there is a possibility that you find yourself in a place that you don't really want to be and don't desire to be. You might feel stuck and you might feel like you want to do something to change your state, but you just can't and you don't really know what to do. Or maybe you are doing something already, but the results are not coming soon enough and you're getting discouraged and you're spiraling down feeling unhappy. This kind of situation is pretty relatable to me if you ask me especially that my life has been a big question mark lately there is a lot of uncertainty and I am balancing on a knife edge of feeling stuck and unmotivated and hopeless and without any energy to do anything and feeling motivated and encouraged and hopeful to change my state and you know and feeling like I trust the process. The thing is that I learned about some concepts and practices that are helping me to experience this more optimistic state of mind more often than feeling stuck. And today I will tell you about the power of mindset and why is it important to be aware of it. So first, let's ask a question what mindset really is. Mindset is a set of beliefs that helps us understand the world around us and interpret it in our own way. From the work of Dr. Ali Aklom, you can see the different mindset about stress. Stress is basically an occurrence when we face adversity and challenges in our work-related effort. And some people might view it as something very, very bad for them, like that is not healthy and is just deliberating. And some people can view it as something enhancing and motivating and something that they can use to pursue their goals and dreams more efficiently. And what mindset actually does is also define what kind of behaviors and what kind of actions we will take about the thing that we are reacting to. The other figure that is worth to mention is Dr. Carol Dweck. She did her research about something called a growth mindset, about the level of intelligence amongst the kids in school. And basically she characterized two types of mindsets, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. In a fixed mindset, the kids, when they were performing a very difficult mathematic exercise, they were like, I, I cannot do it. It's not possible to me. And with the growth mindset, the kids were like, I cannot do it yet. So they were believing that the level of intelligence is open for improvement. So mindset is not really a woohoo thing. There is more and more scientific data about how it affects even our physiology. There was a study made on hotel maids and it was about the mindset about physical activity. So as you can imagine, doing this type of work requires quite a lot of physical activity. You need to move stuff, you need to vacuum, you need to wipe the floors, you need to just push this uh, thing that you're pushing with all of this uh, detergents inside, you know, like it's quite a lot of movement. But when they ask in a questionnaire, those hotel mates, if they are physically active, most of them said no. So then they divided them into two groups. One was the control group and they didn't change anything. And the second group, they educated about benefits of physical activity. They helped them to be aware that they are already quite physically active. And what happened after a few weeks is that this group that changed the mindset about physical activity had the difference in physiology as they would perform more physical activity than the second group. The other experiment that was done, which is super interesting, is about our mindset about food that we are eating. So just to simplify and tell a long story short, two groups of people got the same milkshake. But one group was informed that this is a very processed, sugary and fatty milkshake. And the other group was informed that this is like very healthy and you know, like light and everything. So they were basically drinking the same milkshakes, but they respond in hormones correlated with feeling satisfaction was different. So this is so interesting, like I find it so interesting because it helps to understand that our mindsets are so, so powerful. And this is something that is worth to be aware of. 
And the last thing that I want to mention is the concept coming from mindfulness and some kind of like stoicism as well. The reason why you might feel stuck and unhappy in your life right now is because you are aware of the gap between what you have and what you want to have. And this is called the gap theory of happiness. So basically it means that you believe that to feel happy, you need to feel the gap that is separating you from the things that you have and things that you want to have. And in order to feel happy, you need just to feel it and everything is gonna be okay. Not really, because there is something called hedonistic adaptation. And it means that when you will feel this gap, when you will manage to feel this gap, you will feel the positive emotions for some time peaking, but then you will get used to it and you will come back to your default state of happiness. So what great thinkers say is in order to be happy, you need to start to want the things that you already have. And here comes the gratitude practice. And there is more and more research showing how gratitude practice can improve your life and even the default state of happiness. But what is also important is that we need to keep balance between accepting the things as they are and trying to improve our lives because you can accept the reality and world as it is and still try to improve and become a better person or change your current state. It's not really that conflicting and what it really is is that when you accept the things and you stop worry about them and stress about them it gives you more space to focus on the things that actually matters so now as an example of different mindsets about life situation i will use my example because my experience is something that i know the best so my situation is i am back in my parents house I don't have much resources and I recently started a job which is not my dream job and then my partner is like more than 3000 kilometers from me in a completely different country and I don't know when I'm gonna see him. And now let me rephrase this situation with a different mindset. So I'm back in my parents' house which allows me to have this sense of security that I don't need to worry much. And I don't have much resources or money on my bank account, but I recently started a new job, which is not my dream job, but at the same time, it will help me to raise money and save money to do something else in the future. And I haven't seen my partner since three months and he's like so far away from me. But at the same time, I believe that every day we are getting closer to see each other, so I'm staying hopeful. So those are basically the same situations, but what is different is how I feel about it and how I perceive it and what are my thoughts and feelings. And taking from REBT therapy that I'm learning about lately, which is like rational emotive behavior therapy, it's not the event that is causing the negative emotions. It's the way how you think about it and the way how you perceive it. And your thoughts are very powerful. Rephrasing this situation allows me to see that everything is in motion and there is a hope that my state will change because nothing is really constant and I can see that I am already on my way out of there. But feeling strong negative emotions tend to blur our vision and makes us believe that everything is against us. But there is a very important thing to mention. Feeling bad about your situation, feeling sad about your situation, feeling negative emotions, is not necessarily something that you should avoid. The difference is if you are overwhelmed by those emotions or you are able to experience them in a healthy and more rational way. Because personally, even if I am trying to stay as optimistic as I am, I know that some parts of the situation, they just sucks. And I know that it's not really the thing that I'm just like, yeah, it's, everything is great, what is happening to me? Because this is getting very close to the toxic positivity. And toxic positivity is when you are avoiding the negative emotions. And what we need to remember about is that feeling negative emotions is important to us because it's a signal that something is not aligning with us, that something is going 
wrong and they can be a powerful source for a change because we don't want to feel this way but when we feel this way it's not bad that we feel this way so don't get obsessed with only thinking positive because it will not lead you to authentic feelings of positivity it will lead you to just throwing away all of the negative stuff and not being able to process it and we need to process everything we need to feel because all of the emotions has a specific reason to exist so what can you do to actually begin the process of changing your mindset and approach the great first step is actually to be aware that you have a certain mindset and logically understand it and then the second step would be evaluate think if it's beneficial for you or is it harmful self-reflection is so important when it comes to changing our mindset and creating our reality the third step that i would encourage you is to start developing and exploring the some kind of meditation or mindfulness practice because it will help you to get aware of what kind of thoughts you actually have because it's very important to be aware of what you are thinking in a certain situations and about certain things and to get to know your thoughts better and what is going on here I will recommend you to do a journaling exercise called a stream of thoughts stream of thoughts is basically an exercise that you set a timer for 10 minutes and take a piece of paper and just write anything that comes to your mind like anything without filtering without thinking about it just allowing the words to flow from under your pen i find it as the best way to enter your subconscious mind and express the thoughts that are just like swirling around there you can start it from a prompt like i feel lately dot 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 or i realized dot 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 or a different way how to do it which i'm using i think the most often to ground myself in the present moment i'm just writing i'm sitting in my room on my floor and you start to describe what is going on around you and then you go what is going on inside so I hope you find it helpful, it's good to learn and just explore different ideas. Thank you for watching and see you next time!